Welcome back. Um, I said that we would cover doing exactly what we've just done on CentOS on a Windows machine. So uh, let's go for that now. So let's order a device. There we go. We'll order an hourly virtual server. Uh, we'll put it in London and we'll say the operating system is Microsoft. Let's go for Windows 2012 standard edition and then we'll add just like we did before a network attach 20 gig there it is continue with that so check the order here when it comes through here we are eight cents that's fine okay let's give it a name let's call it uh, nas for Windows and let's just make keep it simple let's just put it on uh, software.com okay and that's it so I've read and finalized so that'll go away now it'll be you know five ten minutes create us a Windows Server virtual machine this will come up saying yeah there's our receipt so that's fine let's let that run um, we can just refresh this page that will actually start creating the new machine within seconds. Come on. Give it another couple of seconds. Okay, I've had the email through. There it is, right. That's for Windows being created. So I'm going to return when, um, when that's ready. Um, in between there's a couple of little things to set up because I want to gain access to the server so I want to set up uh, RDP on Windows so let's get another page here and let's do uh, I'm going to search for um, RDP um, for Mac okay and remote Mac desktop Microsoft remote desktop there you go. That's what you need to download if you want to access, uh, like I am, software um, virtual machines that are running Microsoft on your Mac. So I'm going to download that, and once it's downloaded, um, which comes for free on the Mac, then um, I'll actually show you how to get that up and running when our uh, Microsoft server is actually ready. In fact, I think I already have a copy of this. Let's just see. Oops. RDP. Oops. Microsoft Remote Desktop. There it is. It's already on my machine. So I'm going to show you what that looks like now. It's going to give us a page just like this. And as you can see, I was playing with uh, NAS on Windows. We've got our new one, which will be NAS for Windows, and I'll show you how to add that to this. Log in as the administrator, and then we will get um, our share set up for our NAS on our Microsoft server. So let's give that a couple of minutes. We'll go back, look at the portal again, see where it's at. And it is currently doing the setup provisioning. Okay. We will return in a few minutes. Thank you. So welcome back. Right, we have our nasforwindows.software.com machine. I'm just gonna click in there. And my apologies that this is in full screen and this may be a little bit hard to read, um, but this is purely and simply because, well, you'll see why in a sec. When we do an RDP session, it takes over the whole screen. So, uh, we want our passwords and there's our administrator so I'm just gonna copy that password and now I'm gonna fire off um, our RDP remote Microsoft remote desktop like I said download this for free from the App Store uh, I was playing around with this so I might as well just delete that one earlier on and this was what I had from brand new so uh, connection name um, we're gonna call this uh, 
NAS, well, NAS service. Why not? Um, hostname or IP address. Okay, so I've got the. Um, I've got the VPN running. You can see it here. Here's our VPN. So that's all running. So I'm going to go in on the private address and it's for this machine. So it's 10.112.10.112.123.134. Uh, username is administrator and the password is what we put in the buffer. And, oh, actually, no, I can turn that off. Yeah, okay. So that's fine. Session, play on device, redirect, that's fine. Okay. So if I kill that, it saves it. Yeah, it's not very intuitive that, that you actually have to kill the window to save it. But hey, that's life. And then we'll start this. Continue. And there we are, all logged in on our brand new Windows server. So that's all fine. Um, okay, I'm gonna kill that. Right, lovely, there we go. So we're all logged in, super. Um, where is my Interestingly enough, it's down here. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't quite fully work the way I would have liked. Um, but hey, that's life. Um, so what we want to do is create our file share. Because of course, if I go into um, Explorer here, we don't have any, any connection here to, uh, if I move this this way, move this, oops this this way sorry about this there we go you can see we don't have any um, we don't have any connections to a Z drive here or some sort of NAS drive so that's that's what we're gonna do um, I'm gonna map a network drive drag that over here so we can see it I'm gonna call it the Z drive which is typical um, if we go to our storage now you go to your file storage give that a couple of seconds um, I had some I was playing with earlier, so they'll probably appear in the list. Whew, okay. There we go. Right, and this is a London server. These were Amsterdam, that was London earlier. I think it's going to be this one. Um, we'll give this a go. So just like for CentOS, you want to grab the... Uh, oh, this, yeah, this keyboard was a... A pain. Of course, I'm on an Apple Mac, so I want the backslashes, and I can't for the life of me, there it is, remember where any of the keys are. So, um, and you have to do Control C and Control V. Um, SLN 357. 354. It'll be interesting later on when you see some of the key problems we're going to have um, using the IPMI tool, and we may well stay in Windows here uh, to get that working. Um, reconnect at sign on, that's fine. Um, yeah, finish. Okay, it's going to ask us for a username. So, oops, I didn't want to do that. Show this. So, our username is going to be. The SLN 357354, SLN 357354-4, and our password, again, I'm going to do Control C, not Command, and Control V, remember our credentials, go. And there we are. And there is our NAS service, our disk set up on, um, I've got a computer, there we go. There's our NAS share. So we've now connected from CentOS and from uh, Windows to uh, the NAS that we requested. Hopefully that was useful. Um, you're gonna see why that's useful in, a, in the very next video because 
We're now going to use, um, if I go in here, just for the hell of it to show you what we're going to be doing, um, I'm going to go to oops, google.com. To show you why that is useful, because this is going to kick off uh, an Internet Explorer for us. Um, oh, I mm, don't use. Okay, you'll see why in a second. Because with the new 2012, it's got all sorts of security constructs that stop me from downloading stuff. Um, but if I go to Suzy Download. There's Suzy Enterprise Linux. There'll be a download in here that you can register for. Yeah, so that's one example. Another one would be, I'll add another one of these, uh, CoreOS uh, download. Download CoreOS. Is that the one? No, not that one. There we go, download CoreOS. So if I actually go for the full download CoreOS ISO, there we go, download the stable one. Oh, my, this is what I meant about these security settings. This drives me mad. Um, so settings, security, Medium, apply, okay, let's see if that does it for us. There you go, yeah, save. So I'm going to just save that <coughs> as an ISO image onto this uh, NAS service. And this is, I mean, see how quick that was. This is about, I know it's not huge, but it's about, you know, um, 80 to 100 meg. Uh, in fact, we can see how big it is if we go in here into downloads. Um, it's 144 meg. So I'm going to dump that onto our share. So that'll take a few minutes to come across. While that's doing it, let's go and uh, download. Um, let's download our own CentOS. Yeah. Um, download CentOS. Um, DVD ISO will be fine. Um, I'm going to download CentOS 7 X64. So we want a 64 bit, and there it is. That'll do for us, yeah. So we're going to save that as well. Now, remembering that this is, so kill that one, this is like 4 gig. So it's going to take five minutes to come down, which is really, really quick. Am I going for a UK one and it's in the US? No. No, that should be fine. How big is this? Well, it's probably the 4.9 gig, so. That's going to take a little bit of time to come down, but it is very quick. Well, that's 11% already. So if you've ever downloaded this on your home machine, you know how slow it is. So this is quite a handy way of doing it. And once they're down, so onto our share here, this is where I'm going to keep the ISO images. And it knows it's a disk image file. The advantage of that will come become clear in the next video when we will use IPMI to assign a virtual CD drive which actually goes looking for your NAS and it will pick these images up and it will see them so that you can boot from these images directly from uh, a bare metal machine. So that way you can boot into memory and you can then install whatever OS it is that you want to install yourself. So that's 25% already. So. I mean, there's nothing for me to do other than wait for that to run and then copy it over onto the share. Um, I hope this has been useful and tune in again for the next video when we're going to be booting our own 
um, our own images so that uh, we can actually show how you can create your own images as an ISO file um, or indeed download other ones like CoreOS and actually boot from them on a bare metal machine in software. My name's Eamon Killian, I hope this has been useful, thanks very much. One last, uh, my apologies, that wasn't the last part, uh, even though I made it seem like it was. There's a little bit more to do in terms of getting ready for uh, booting from an ISO image. Uh, I think I mentioned it, but I might as well cover it now. Um, if you um, open up a new, uh, a new Google window, here we go. I put it in here and you do a search for software IPMI download then there's a perfectly good link in the knowledge layer we'll just go down to it download tool you will want to download onto your Mac the IPMI viewer and that comes down as a zip file and once it's down you will then uh, you know, unzip it, install it, I mean I'm not going to go through that, but you will then get one of these lovely little icons. And that, when you click on it, of course making sure you are already connected, um, so let me just double check, uh, double connected, system preferences, let me go in and make sure we are connected to our PPTP that we did far earlier on, in one of these housekeeping sessions. Once you're on that, then you can start creating connections to your machines. Um, and that is where we will begin the next tutorial. So I just want to show you that really quickly. So at least when we enter tutorial 13, you'll have IPMI viewer down, you will have some ISO images or um, um, some NAS, uh, set up already whether it's on Windows or CentOS because we went through both um, that will then be available to this tool so that we can create a virtual CD drive and boot from that image. Many many thanks my name is Eamon Killian I hope these videos are useful and my apologies for it being so long um, I have been absolutely snowed and it's been ages since I've created a few videos hopefully today's housekeeping set of videos have been useful for you. Thanks very much. Bye.